Hello, and uh, welcome back for the next talk. Um, the next talk is primarily about saving time when setting up Typo 3, and uh, it's also about um, how to save time with Microsoft Azure. With me here are, first of all, Johnny, who is doing this talk. He's from DKD. And Andreas from Microsoft, um, and they are both uh, going to do this talk together. So if you have any questions concerning um, Microsoft Azure, Andreas is here for you too. Have fun. Uh, hello, I'm Johnny, but uh, well, is it okay with the microphone? So it's my first talk at any bigger tech conference, so please apologize any mistakes I will make. Uh, officially, my name is Johannes, but everybody calls me Johnny. Everybody knows me. No. Wie soll ich das denn halten am besten? Geht, okay, alles gut. Okay. So, um, how did I end up here? Uh, my first experience with Typo 3 was in summer 2006. I was working a bit doing some personal website stuff and I kept using Typo 3 from that on to do well, all of my website needs. Since 2012, I'm employed is at DKD Internet Service GmbH and started studying at University of, of Applied Science Darmstadt and now this winter I'm studying in Sheffield, so still a student, but I'm working when I'm not studying and my last, last project was bringing um, Typo 3 on the Microsoft Azure Cloud. So what's the agenda for today? Again, is for today is looking how did we end up here? How did we start? Then we are looking a bit back into the past because we want to look in the future, but before we can look in the future, we need to look a bit back in the past. We'll look what do machines do for us and what might that have to do with Typo 3? Then we will talk a bit about Typo 3 CMS and how we can save time with that then bringing Type 3 CMS into the Microsoft Azure Cloud, and then we look in the future, what can we do together to further improve on that situation. So, next slide. How did we end up here? It started in Berlin, actually. Olivier was talking with some Microsoft people at Berlin Buzzwords two or three years ago, I, I don't know exactly, and we talked. they talked a bit about open source and how we maybe could bring Type 3 CMS into the Microsoft Azure Cloud as a nice open source content system. And this year, the So, yeah, okay, now I'm uh, back on the microphone again. So, that's basically uh, the origin. Next part, machines. So, I don't know who of you remembers that machine. So, what is it? Well, yeah, it's, it's kind of the spinning jenny. It's in the end of the 18th century and it's something in common with that machine. So, that's mm, some schematic of a um, steam machine, a uh, steam engine. Next machine. Anybody recognize that one? Kind of calculating machine. Yes, it's some calculating machine by uh, Babash, uh, the difference engine, and then some early computer, some more recent computer schematic, and then finally Typo 3. And uh <laughs> 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 well, well, what do they have uh, together in common? Any ideas? Steam driven. <laughs> well, uh, kind of. Uh, it's not the point. <laughs> well, for me, they are basically about saving time. So the spinning jenny was about making one worker at the beginning do the work of eight other workers because he was he could spin eight spools of wool at the same time, and usually he could have only spun one spool. Now he could do eight, and later versions he could up to hundred spools at the same time. So it's saving time. The steam engine is saving time because we are needing less manual work and we can use uh, the power of the steam to do work for us. The differential engine is about simplifying mathematical calculations so we don't have to do them by hand. The computer is about 
doing in the end mathematical calculation and typo 3 is there for us so we don't have to write each website again write HTML, write CSS, maybe some PHP scripts. No, we got our system. Our system does most of the stuff for us. And we have to do less. We save time. We can do other things. We, well, m maybe we can work less because in the beginning we had to work like 16 hours a day. Now we are down to hopefully eight or so. Maybe we can reduce this further or we can spend more time on nice things. So it's about saving time. And one nice part of a movie about saving time is this short extract from the movie Metropolis by the German uh, regisseur Fritz Lang. I, I just so showed it. Shows for me some nice connection between saving time and not saving time while using machines. So, well, just just watch it. <laughs> Uh, well, the movie is longer. If you have not seen it, you should see the full version. But uh, the main point of this extract for me is um, if we don't really look forward about it, we are working for the machines and not the machines working for us. We are spending too much time on fixing problems the machines should fix for us and not useful things like building new machines, doing that stuff. So how can we save time with Type 3 CMS? It's basically for me about three points. First point is it's a lot of code reuse. I don't have to write all the code again. I can use your code if you have written some code. I don't have written some code. Probably some of you have written code as well. And if I want to do n a new website, I can use that code. I don't need to re-implement it. I'm saving a lot of time. Next thing is extensions. There are a lot of extensions. I can customize my stuff, my website to the needs. I don't need to spend time on it. I just use the extension. It's fine. Last thing, what's in the end about why do we do Typo 3 to do faster content creation? With faster content creation, the users finally can create their content themselves. They don't need us as developers to do it for them. And in the end, there's an awful lot of time saved. But for me, there's one big hurdle about saving time with Typo 3. And, well, I don't can can somebody guess what, what's the biggest problem? Or what, what could be my biggest problem? Uh, my biggest problem with uh, Typo 3 is setup, because I need to do a lot of stuff until I can get Typo 3 running. I need kind of an operating system on some machine, or uh, actually I need some physical hardware before I can install an operating system, but uh, it's not on the slide. Then I need some web server and maybe some proxy before it and some caches and whatever. I need some PHP version, because there are a lot of different versions. I need finally a Typo 3 version. I don't know, should I use Neos or not? 4.7 or 4.5 or maybe 6.2, I don't know. Some hoster to do it, some extensions. Which extensions should I install on my website? Because there are different news extensions, different calendar extensions. And if I'm just new to the stuff, how should I decide? Do I use some CSS framework or do I write everything by hand? How do I finally create my content? How do I structure my content? So, and maybe some user roles. So in the end, I'm spending a lot of time doing the setup and not doing any content for the website yet. So I spent a lot of time, got well a blank page as a result. So we need to improve that. The developer can do, do all that stuff, but, but well, it's taking him a lot of time. So I want to spend less time on that because it's not interesting for me. Most users, because if you just want to target Type 3 as users as well, they have no idea to do it anymore. Maybe. When I started like eight years ago, it was okay to read 30 m pages manuals and do the stuff all by hand and each instruction. But it's not how the internet is working today. So they will find somebody to do this and spend, they need to spend time on that. Somebody others need to spend time on that. So what, what are the solutions? Solutions, first thing is hosting. Just simple hosting of Typo 3. Just one click hosting. I want a Typo 3 website. I need some way to do that. Hosting, next thing is 
pre-configured distributions. As a distribution, maybe I want to create some football club page like FC Big Feed, as we are used to do, and I want a calendar, I want some new system, I want some jelloies. Well, I want a lot of stuff and everybody needs to configure it again, so. To do it better, we need to configure it once and then give the package to anybody. So, now we're coming to the next topic, how can we do that stuff? And uh, how can we use Microsoft Azure to do that stuff? So, first thing is, what actually is Microsoft uh, Azure? I've taken some content from the what is Azure page, on the well, Azure page itself. Some, uh, it's EIS and PHH. Some acronyms, it's infrastructure as a service and platform as a service, meaning for us, either you can get hardware machines and do all the stuff yourself, if you just want hardware, or you can use a platform like getting some uh, web host, uh, yeah, server and PHP all configured for you, so you don't need to do it yourself. That's a good thing, we are saving time if we don't have to configure it ourselves. Next thing is, it's hybrid ready, especially in some corporate environments, we have problems, where can we store data? And so we need to store it on premise at the company and can't store it in the cloud. With Azure, you can do that both, saving us a hassle if you have to do some lawful requirements. Next thing is, it's actually quite open source because you can get a Linux VM on it as well. You can use some other languages. Well, it's not that close as you might think. Next thing, for me at least, the great thing is always up, it's always on. It's not my local development machine if I want to run some development, I got a real server somewhere, some friends can attach to that, maybe check out my website in progress without any problems. And it's scalable, so if I need more servers, I can use that. Mm. And in the end, it's everywhere making um, load times faster because it's faster to the user. So less and faster setup and installation for users as required before. It can be solved by this if we can, ty if we can get Typo 3 as a package on it and then we might later easy do easy integration with other solutions we might find on Azure. So, oh, oh. So, uh, now some technical slides uh, to give you a quick start if you want to do some stuff with Azure yourself. Um, first thing is, because for me it's, a, well, the most common thing, I want to do some simple web page, I want to try some things, I do some Git hosting, but We'll look into the Azure interface if anybody, if you wants to try it, you can just do it. Uh, so that's well, the first page of the interface. We just want to create a new website. Basically, mean there's some website functionality. We don't have any websites yet. We can create a website, insert some parameters, and we have a website there. Quite simple, a lot faster than setting up some local machines or some local VM to do the setup. We got the website here. Well, it's created. There's no content on it. We can simply add some Git repository because, well, Git is the fastest way for me to deploy code somewhere. And then I can locally add, yeah, some simple HTML file, create a Git repository, and just push it on the web. Then it's up. And I got it on the website. It's fine. It's on the web. It's accessible for anybody. So it's a quite fast way if you just want to do some stuff. But that's not the interesting thing, uh, because we are here about talking, bringing type of 3 CMS to Azure, so, but just so some basic functionality. There's some a Windows development flow, if you want to do, well, a PHP development in Windows, there's some tools for that, and I must say, well, I was not convinced that before, really, but the tools are nice to use, and it's quite easy if you got the package and we made the package for you, so you can just, on your local machine, search for in the web, web platform installer, which is kind of a package manager for you if you want to do some web development on Windows. You can just say, now, we did a release uh, yesterday, look for a type of 3 CMS in the search bar, click on the install button and click on install and we will run the setup for you. And that is already working now. You, you can just use it as you want if you have a Windows machine or some virtual machine if you want to try it. And the setup is, well, saving you time because it's doing all the stuff for you. We pre-configure pre that setup, so it's setting up the database connection, it's setting up the configuration file, but it's doing all the things and it's installing. If it's done installing, you get to have some uh, web editor, uh, yeah, some editor you can use in machine to edit the files if you want to do this. 
and then you got a local running type of three without any problems. You can just uh, do the install. One important thing, because the installer is already doing all the stuff, you only have install step one, click OK, and then you're up to four, so you don't need to do any database setup. We are doing that for you. And then, well, yeah, it's just basic type of three installation, and then you get there. You can install some distribution. So we have arrived at the next topic, distributions. Well, these are not that many distributions. We want to improve on that one, and they're missing some images. But you can install the uh, introduction distribution and just use it. And you can even publish on it on the web because the platform is providing that for you. There's some more features nice for web development. So yeah, for example, you get some request tracer, which was quite handy in debugging some problems with the Ajax login. And you got a database editor. So you have to set up a lot less than you have if you install everything by hand. And you can even publish directly from your local machine to the Azure Cloud by just using some setup as well. You just say, OK, I want to publish it. You create a new website. You can configure the website. Just say, OK, I want first try a free website. You do that. You click some buttons, and it's going up to the web. It's checking, OK, everything is fine. I want to upload my 10,000 uh, type of three files. It's going up to the cloud and uploading. And then you can use it, and it's just there in the web. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> so uh, next thing is b that basically was for developers because a user don't doesn't want to install web platform installer and web matrix and click some buttons. So in the end, a user just wants to use web gallery. Web gallery means he's just on the Azure page uh, itself and say, I want to create a new website. Saying, yeah, I want a website. I want to do it from gallery. You can select some different tools, and uh, tomorrow or so, we need to do one last fix. You will be able to select type of three there. Click, OK, I want type of three. Set up some specification things. You don't need to, because most times it's just pre-configured. You will get a free MySQL database with it as well. We'll create the website, and uh, while well you have the website there, it's running in the web. It's fine. You get your type of three there without any further setup. So. To do some more technical background on this, what were, were some problems bringing Type 3 uh, back to, to Windows? Because uh, I had to work a bit on it. Uh, some things didn't seem to be really tested in recent times. So, well, Type 3 was quite unhappy. And I don't know, you probably know the basic error message <laughs> saying, OK. There were four ma major problems. First problem, PHP. PHP is at least if you use it with Type 3, it's requiring some extensions like OpenSSL extension, file info extension, uh, especially the file info extension made problems because it's not there on most machines, even on some Linux machines. It not, it, it's not there, but actually Type 3 is only using it in, in three places or so. So we did some fallback there, there, so it's working fine now without that one. Next thing is you need to put MySQL into some uh, mm, safe mode because no, not all features are equally in every place, but it's quite simple to do. Bigger problem was uh, fixing OpenSSL, because uh, OpenSSL and ASR out back end of Type 3, well, it's getting a bit complicated in, this, in the configuration, because it's depending on some environment variables. And if you do the Ajax call, it's not reading that environment vari variables. So it's getting a different configuration, and then it's having some incompatibility. <coughs> incompatibilities <laughs> if you're just using it uh, together with uh, the non-IAX calls. And, but if you fix all that, it's running file system check is yeah, and then you can go. And type of three error messages disappear, and you can run it on the cloud. So one other major problem, or not major problem, but interesting problem that popped up is uh, the database consumption. I don't know. Uh, so on Azure. If you do free website, you get 20 megabyte of free space. So I install the introduction distribution. And uh, maybe you can guess how much place it's taking. So maybe it's taking only one megabyte because, well, it's not that much content. Some pages, some text content. The images are hopefully stored in file admin. Maybe three megabyte. Yeah, well, because actually it's quite some pages. Or six megabyte. Or 12 megabytes. So well, uh, oh, oh. 
who is for one megabyte? Who guesses one megabyte after installing the introduction distribution? Well, yeah, well that, that's a point. <laughs> Okay, so he spoiled that one, yeah, but the problem actually is you add 22 megabytes or so. Uh, because as he said, the extension, managers extension managers take like 16 megabytes of that because he's storing all versions of metadata of all extensions ever published to the tear, which is, well, at least if you only have 20 megabytes, not that needed. <laughs> so we needed to add some fixes for that. We well, we did it in a way that's working on local machine, but we certainly could improve there. So maybe if anybody you, of you has good ideas how to improve there, well, talk to us, talk to me. I would be really interested. And in the end, it's kind of remaining like six megabyte real data. And that's absolutely fine if you've got 20 megabyte. So what could we do in the future with that stuff? The first thing, as I told, is specialized packages. So. We don't need to do the FC Big Feed anymore for anybody doing some football club website. We could create one FC star distribution. So any football club, just, hey, I want that package and it's giving me all the extensions I need. So we could configure and use for it, put it into the package. We could implement some calendar for that. We could implement some gallery because on random images because I did some actually some <laughs> web pages for football clubs and they wanted random images and galleries. And Every time I had to do the same steps, include the static templates and so what, why not create a specialized in, in, uh, package for that? And well, some more extensions and some more configurations so you don't have to do it again every time. And then not only creating the packages, distributing the packages to the clients. And we could do that for a lot more of different things because Type 3 is used well by many people and they're in a lot of ways using it the same way but each time we need to configure it. So save time, do the package once, distribute it, and we can further extend it by some other stuff. Maybe maybe somebody wants to do video streaming. So the question now is, how is Type of 3 connected with video streaming? Well, in the beginning, it's not really connected at all because Type of 3 is not video streaming, but it's about content management. Like re videos are in the end content management, but how to do the technical streaming. Well, we are in Azure, which means we can use some further uh, Microsoft Azure services, which, for one example, are the Azure Media Service. So if you want to do some video streaming with Type of 3, you could fall back to the Azure Media Services and implement them, implement some connection to Type of 3, and then create a package for it so other people can use it as well. Or maybe you want to do some machine learning because, well, Machine learning is in the end about saving time as well because you need to do work less work if the machine is doing the work for you. So it's quite thematic to do the, to do it, I think. Oh, notifications hubs if you want to implement some functionality to mo mobile apps. So there's a lot of stuff to do and a lot more. So And if you want to hear more, you can talk to Andreas Urban. Or do you want to say something about more services? No. So from a technology, uh, technology perspective and how to engage with uh, open source communities or uh, digital marketing agencies, we are at the very beginning. And uh, what we currently see that uh, what uh, Johannes has said, uh, Azure Media Services uh, are one of the features which uh, really have, uh, have a value for, for DMAs, for digital marketing agencies. But there are a lot of others. So. Uh, um, I would be very keen on having this discussion with you guys uh, after the presentation. What you can imagine, what what could be uh, what could be some some other areas, technology areas, which could could enhance your your business, your current installations, um, on top of uh, what uh, Johannes has just uh, presented. So uh, I think uh, media services, how to how to stream uh, videos, very cheap. Um, is a very hot topic. We have uh, just as an another example, uh, gaming agencies who are just uh, buy storage uh, on Windows Azure and uh, put uh, the uh, high score counting, for example, in the cloud. So it could also be happened component wise. And uh, what would be very interesting for me, what which kind of components do you see? 
which uh, could be pushed in the cloud um, in order to, to have a smoother and a more seamless uh, solution at the end. Uh, thanks for that. And uh, so basically in the end, we are quite near to the end of the talk because uh, it's in the end it's about saving time, reducing less time spent. So, uh, but please talk to us because so it's quite a quite early step in the project. So we, we made type of three one on that as a cloud. Now we need to use it. So and to need to use it, we need your input. If you have any ideas, talk to us. If you w want to see our company website, go to uh, DKDD. Well, we are doing a lot of, there's nothing on Azure yet, but th there will be some stuff. And you can contact me on Twitter at KSYogo or write me in mail if you want, or well, uh, go to the GitHub pages if you want to look at the changes. There are not many changes, should be quite easy to get into. And well, yeah, if you have ideas, talk to us. And if you have questions or any discussions, I'm open to it now.